So we continue with the messages on the Beatitudes. There's this one and one more, all right? These words, and, and just think, these are the words of Jesus. Isn't it amazing that we have them? It's just something, isn't it? That the very Son of God, the one who became flesh, walked among us. We have his words, and he still speaks today by the Spirit. We can still hear his voice in our minds through the church, through so many different avenues of love. But these words, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers said these words on a hillside next to the Sea of Galilee. A ragged group was there, beaten up by life's difficulties. He says, blessed are the peacemakers. Peace is a bridge of love. It's a bridge of love. Now, the story is told of two farmers who are brothers, all right? They're brothers. And they have adjoining farms. Evidently, the farm was divided up among the brothers. The farm houses face each other, all right? And the brothers would work together on each of the farms, help one another out. But then they got into a vicious argument. Brothers will do that once in a while. And they disowned one another. And they said they would have nothing to do with each other ever again. Now, one brother, the one brother across the way, he uh, took it to another level. He started digging a deep ditch between the properties. And he diverted a stream to fill up the ditch so there would be a moat between them. The message was, don't come on my property. You are not welcome here. We are now separated. A traveling carpenter came by to the one brother and said, do you have any work? I'd like to do some work for you. And the farmer said, I I don't really have any work. But then he looked at a big pile of wood and he got an idea. He thought, my brother built a moat. I'm going to have an eight-foot high fence built. So he says to the traveling carpenter, I want you to build an eight-foot high fence fence. I want you to put it right here so that I don't have to look at that farm over there. That's my brother's farm, who I no longer call my brother. And I don't want to look at his farm anymore because we've had a falling out. He's not my brother. Now, I got to go into town and I got to get some things. I'll be gone all day. So you work on the fence. When I get back, I'll, I'll help you finish it. So he goes off to town. When he gets 
back. It's nearly dark. And he looks to see if the fence is there. And it is not. No work has been done on the fence. This angers him. Then he looks down in the meadow below by the moat. And he sees that a little bridge has been built across the moat, complete with handrails. He goes down there angrily to see how easy it would be to tear it down. And his brother is there and walks across the bridge with his hand extended. And he says, I cannot believe after how I've treated you that you truly must be a brother for you have built a bridge for us both to walk upon, to share. Peace is a bridge of love. Jesus speaks this to people who've been hurt. They've been beaten down by the Romans. They're resentful. And they have the temptation to be judgmental and critical and to want the Romans to be punished for how they have hurt them. Now Jesus would say later, we're to love our enemies. We're to pray for those who persecute us. Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus wants the group of people there to turn to compassion and not be judgmental. To have compassion upon their enemies. Now, compassion is not judgmental, is it? Compassion seeks to understand. It is a bridge of love, isn't it? Among those that Jesus were, was speaking to were a group called the Zealots. You remember what the Zealots are? They're a group of Hebrews who believe that Violent resistance, rebellion against the Romans, is the best way to prove that you are ch uh, a child of Abraham, that you are a good Hebrew. If you're willing to take up the sword against your enemy, then you're a good Hebrew. Jesus even called Simon the Zealot to be a part of the disciples. Not to endorse that kind of thinking, but rather to get to know somebody who was in that group. Jesus wanted to have relationships with all kinds of people. Compassion is not judgmental. Now, one time, Jesus was um, talking, and a group of religious leaders started grumbling about Jesus, murmuring against him. They said, he welcomes tax collectors, and tax collectors, you know, 
uh, collected taxes on behalf of Rome, so they were considered traitors. He welcomes tax collectors and sinners. We could all define what sinners are. He welcomes tax collectors and sinners and eats with them. You know, it's one thing to welcome a sinner. It's another to eat with one. I went to school with someone who was a part of a, a Christian denomination that believed Christians were only in their denomination. All other Christians were not really Christians, just their denomination. And they went so far as to say, you should never eat with anyone you're not in covenant with. So you don't even eat with someone who's outside of the denomination. And yet, somehow, this young man decided to come uh, to a Christian university, Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, decided to go there against his parents' wishes. He ate with someone outside of his denomination for the very first time at college. We liberalized that boy. <laughs> we did. I taught him to play cards. He'd never done that. <laughs> well, you get the idea. Compassion is not judgmental. And some people get so judgmental they won't even eat with someone they call them names they're outside they don't want to have a relationship with them compassion though is not judgmental the chief criticism of the church here's judgmentalism going the other way is what that the church is judgmental. That's it. The church is judgmental. We don't want to be with judgmental folks. That's the chief criticism. Now, Myron Augsburger is a Mennonite preacher. Now, Mennonites, you know, are known for peacemaking. It's in their DNA. Nonviolence is their way. Myron Augsburger has a brother named David. David Augsburger was in the peace movement in the 70s in this country. I was in a retreat with Myron Augsburger, wonderful man. It was a retreat in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, at Tommy Tyson's Retreat Center, a United Methodist Evangelist. And I heard uh, Myron Augsburger say some things about peacemaking. And I want to share them. These are his words, not mine. Are you ready? Here we go. The first one. Peacemaking maximizes what we have in common and minimizes our differences. Are we not all created in the image of God? Secondly, peacemaking emphasizes 
forgiveness and rejects revenge. You know the problem with revenge, even when you try to get even, it never quite works out that way. Someone always thinks, oh, you hit a little harder than I hit. Peacemaking looks beyond the issue to the person. So if the issue is poverty, it really helps to be in relationship with someone who's in poverty. If we don't have a relationship with someone in poverty, then we can forget, not realize what poverty means. Next, peacemaking means confronting in love. In fact, I think just about everything we do is supposed to be in love, isn't it? (laughs) Just about everything. I can't think of a single time when you go, well, well, let's leave out, let's leave out love. Let's not do that on this situation. No, peacemaking is confronting in love, which means sometimes We do have to confront injustice, right? That there are wrongs in the world. But we want to do that with love, don't we? We want to do that with love. Love goes a long way. Now, when these uh, religious leaders were murmuring against Jesus and saying he ate with tax collectors and sinners and, and uh, ate with them. Do you know he told a story right after that? And there's a series of stories, but I'll just give his first one. He said there was a shepherd, a good shepherd, who had a hundred sheep. And one of them got lost, all right? You remember what the shepherd did? Hunted for the lost sheep, right? Went out, probably had compassion for the lost sheep, found the sheep, brought it home. And do you remember what the shepherd says? Rejoice with me. He left the 99 in the field, didn't he? To get the one. Rejoice with me. I have found the lost sheep and brought it home. And then Jesus summarizes and says, It will be this way. There will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents, then what? 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Now, I don't care how righteous we are, we usually have something to repent of. Would you agree? So Jesus is exaggerating there because... There is not a righteous person I know who doesn't need to repent of something. That's just human life, isn't it? But he went out, and Jesus is confronting the people who are considering him to be a sinner. He confronts them in love, and Jesus tells stories so that we can see who we are. And he does it in love. And he does it to welcome 
we must welcome the sinner. I suppose there's a lot of motivations for evangelism, but I think compassion's the best motive. Some people are motivated by judgment. That seems way secondary to me. Imagine if the shepherd had had a judgmental spirit. Then the shepherd would have said something like this. That stupid sheep. Wandered off again. That sheep has made its bed. It can lie in it. That sheep deserves the wolf. You can't bring many sinners home like that, can you? Hmm. Peacemaking is confronting in love. And this next one goes right along with it. Peacemaking is talking with one another rather than about one another. Hmm. And peacemaking is a willingness to suffer loss. Peacemaking will cost you something. You'll have some pain to bear. We'll have some pain to bear. In fact, whenever we forgive anyone, we're bearing the burden of the pain of the hurt, aren't we? And letting the person who hurt us be free. That hurts us. We're willing to suffer loss. Jesus is. He proved it on the cross, didn't he? He died for all, even enemies. So Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And I take this to mean then that part of God's plan for the church is peacemaking. Peacemaking is God's vision For the church, blessed are the peacemakers. They will be called children of God. So, at Church of the Cross, United Methodist, in Kettering, Ohio, where I last served, there was within a quarter of a mile of that church, the Marshall House. The Marshall House was a facility for people with disabilities who are adults. And one of the people with disabilities from Marshall House started walking to Church of the Cross and attending worship at their contemporary worship service, a service much like ours here. Her name is Donetta. Donetta. Now, Donetta is an interesting person. Every Sunday, you know how I scamper out there to get to those doors so I can greet you before you leave? All right. I did that there. Every Sunday, I'd go out to the doors after the service was concluded, and Donetta would come through the line, and Donetta would shake my hand, and she would say the exact same thing every week. The word was beautiful. I like that. Do you like that? I like that. Didn't matter how bad or poorly I preached because... <laughs> The word was beautiful, all right? The word was beautiful. 
And then she would give me a gift. Every week, I got a gift from Donetta. One week, it was aluminum foil wrapped around a chicken breast. She gave me fried chicken in the, at the end of the service. Often, she gave me squashed up cake. I'd try to unwrap it, and it was beyond edible. <laughs> she gave me candy. She, one time, she came out and shot me with a Nerf gun. Donetta was an interesting person. Now, she could get excited. And so on one Sunday, she was so excited by what the praise team was doing, she ran up front, turned, and started dancing with the music. All right? And she had this very small... Morocco. <laughs> and she was trying to keep time with the music. She was actually pretty good at keeping time most of the time. But this, and I mean to be funny here, it shook up the praise team. <laughs> okay? Shook them up. All of a sudden, someone else is in the percussion section. Now, they hoped it was a one-time event, but alas, the next Sunday, Danetta joined at the beginning of the songs, and the next Sunday, she did it, and the praise team decided they needed to talk about it. Now, they had a discussion about it. And they used the church vision to help them discuss it. All right? I thought this was theologically astute of them. Now, the church vision at Church of the Cross was, uh, is this. Church of the Cross is a growing community of faith where Jesus Christ changes lives. We welcome the Holy Spirit. Ah, Jesus welcomes sinners. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We welcome the Holy Spirit so that all will discover their God-given gifts and delight in sharing the love of God in the community and the world. Grace so pervades the atmosphere of the church that questions, doubts, and fears can be honestly expressed. And every person is loved, respected, nurtured, and celebrated. That was their vision. So they discussed Donetta in the light of that vision, and this is what they said. Donetta has the gift of enthusiasm for worship. We need to let her use her gifts. And every person is to be loved and respected and nurtured and celebrated. And that includes Donetta. How can we do that? Now, it wasn't easy because, quite frankly, sometimes Donetta didn't dress just right, okay? Sometimes her skirt was a bit short, <laughs> in my opinion. Sometimes her colors clashed. Get the picture? And I can almost guarantee you it happened for years because she joined the church, became a disciple there. 
all right? But every Halloween, she wore a witch's hat. A witch's hat in worship. And this is what they decided to do. They made her a member of the praise team. They put her name in the bulletin where all the praise team was listed. And on the next Sunday, when she came up front and did her maraca and danced, sometimes more lively than, you know, maybe was preferable. <laughs> At the end of the service, the praise team leader went up to Donetta Anderson and put her arm around her before she could get away back to her pew. She said, don't, don't leave, Donetta. Stay here. And put her arm around her. And she said, I want to introduce to you the newest member of our praise team, Donetta Anderson. Anderson. And they bought her a new maraca. And when the world sees us handle this in a peacekeeping way, a peacemaking way, maybe the world will say, they are children of God. Let's pray. Lord God, Help us. You've said, blessed are the peacemakers. It's not easy. Give us a bridge of love. And help us to welcome. To welcome all people. For everyone. Should be loved respected and nurtured and celebrated. All for your glory. Amen.